Hi, I'm Miss Tern. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to practice listing and counting all the unique Hamilton cycles in a complete graph. A Hamilton cycle is just a cycle that visits every vertex. Remember, a cycle doesn't repeat vertices, so a Hamilton cycle visits every vertex exactly once. Since every pair of vertices in a complete graph is adjacent, each of the sequences of vertices in the graph is a Hamilton cycle, and there are n minus 1 factorial of these sequences. We're going to begin with an unweighted graph and just practice listing all the unique Hamilton cycles. Determine the number of unique Hamilton cycles in the complete graph with four vertices and list them. So remember, every sequence of edges is going to represent a Hamilton cycle. In this case, the number of the number of vertices is four. So we know that there are going to be n minus one factorial or four minus one factorial number of Hamilton cycles. This would be three factorial. There is a factorial on most scientific calculators, but all that it means is to start at the number three and multiply each integer until we get down to one. So in this case, that means that there are gonna be six different cycles. In particular, six cycles starting at each vertex. I'm going to start all my cycles at A. That way I don't repeat cycles by listing the same cycle, but just starting in the middle of it. I don't want to list equivalent cycles. Like A, B, C, D is a cycle that would be equivalent to B, C, D, A. We don't want to list both of them. So I have A, B, C, D. That's one of my six. It's also possible to go from A to B, but then instead of going to C next, to go to D and then to C. Notice how I'm starting with the A, B possibilities. Keeping it in alphabetical order is very helpful to making sure that you don't undercount or overcount. Now that I've listed both of the A, B possibilities, I'm going to move on to the A, C possibilities. So I could have A, C and then to B and then to D, or I could have A, C and then to D and then to B. All right, those are all the A, C possibilities, and now I'm going to move on to what happens if we start by going from A to D? So if we go from A to D, we could then go to B and then to C, or we could go from A to D and then from C to B. So I've listed all six of the different Hamilton cycles, and I know they're unique because I only listed ones starting at one of the vertices, and I listed all possible orders of the vertices. Now let's count and list all of the unique Hamilton cycles in a complete graph with five vertices. We know that if the number of vertices n is five, then the number of unique Hamilton cycles will be n minus one factorial, which is going to be five minus one factorial or four factorial. Remember, all factorial means is to multiply from four all the way down to one. So we have four times three is 12 times two is 24. So we can expect to have 24 Hamilton cycles. You can see the number of cycles grows very rapidly when we increase the number of vertices. But we're gonna take the same organized approach to listing them. We're going to start with one vertex. I'm again going to pick vertex A only because I find it easiest to keep everything in alphabetical order. So we're going to start always with vertex A and then I'm first going to list all of the cycles that start with A that go to B. So I'm gonna go from A to B and then after that to C and then to D, and then to E. All right, so that would look like A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E back to A again. Next, I'm going to keep A, B, and C in their same order, and I'm going to say, hmm, what if instead of going to D, then I went to E first, and then to D. So here we're talking about the cycle that goes A to B, B to C, then to E, then to D, and then back to A. All right, well, we've exhausted all the possibilities for A, B, C, so now let's try A, B, D. We will never go back to having a C in the third position because we don't want to overcount. So what if we went from A to B, 
to D. Now, keeping alphabetical order priority, um, I'm going to go to C and then to E. Or I could do A to B to D and E to C. All right, so those two possibilities are A to B to D to C to E and back to A, or A to B to D to E to C and back to A. So you can see there are different cycles. At this point, we've done all the ABCs, ABDs, and now I'm gonna go move on to the ABEs. So I have A to B to E, and then keeping alphabetical order, then my priority then is C to D. Okay, or I could do A to B to E and reverse it, D to C. So those two would be A to B to E to D to C and back to A, or A to B to E to D to C and back to A. All right, so now we've gone A, B, C, A, B, D, and A, B, E. Now we're at the end of the letters in our graph. So we're going to now go back to uh, changing the second letter. Instead of doing the A, Bs, instead of doing the A, Bs, we're going to do the A, Cs now. So we have A to C. That leaves B, E, and D, but we're going to stick to alphabetical order. So first we'll do B to D to E, keeping them in alphabetical order. Then if there's another A, C, B, I need to do it. And there is A, C, B would go then to E to D. And then I've done both of the possibilities for A, C, B. So I'm going to move on to A, C. The next letter out of the three B, E, D in alphabetical order would be D. And then B and then E. And then A, C, D with E and then B. So we've done both of the A, C, Ds. And now we get to the A, C, Es. So for the A, C, Es, we can either have a B and then a D or we can have a D and then a B. And now we've done all the ACEs and we're at the end of uh, the letters for the third letter there. Okay, so we've done all the ABs and all the ACs and now we're gonna try what if the cycle starts with AD. So we have AD and then the remaining letters are B, C, and E. So first we start with the B because it's first in the alphabet and C and E. And we're going to try another ADB where we switch the last two letters. And so that's the only two possibilities there. And now we're going to have to change the third letter. So we're going to have A to D to C. That will leave B and E. Or A to D to C which will leave E and B. So we've done A to D to B, A to D to C, and now that leaves A to D. Out of C, E, and B, we've only got the E left. So A, D, E, and then the remaining letters would be the B and the C in alphabetical order, or reverse them, A, D, E, C, B. And again, in the third position, we've reached the E. So now we have to go and switch the second position again. We've done A, Bs, we've done A, Cs, we've done A, Ds, and now we're going to do A, Es, which leaves the B, the C, and the D. And we'll start with that order since it's alphabetical. And then we could have A, E, B with the D and the C switched. And those are the only possibilities for A, E, B. So now we're going to move on to A, E, C leaving B and D at the end, either in alphabetical order or switched to DB. So we've done the AEBs, AECs, and now we do the AEDs, leaving the B and C at the end in alphabetical order or switched to B, C, B. And at this point, you can see we have four lists with six cycles each. So we have all 24 of our cycles. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the videos. You can also subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos.